Out here, the ground's so broken up, as the old timers would say. Ravines and lots of woods, and, you know, thick forest. It's easy to lose your sheep out here. from in Wales. What they say is you don't find any good sheep without a good shepherd. And there's no good shepherd without a good dog. Well, they're not slaves, but they work like slaves. They really want to work. You never have to tell a border collie to get to work. You only, you always have to tell them to stop working, yeah? They say they're the most willing workforce in the world. So you want everything done in a calm way. So if you have a dog that keeps away from the sheep, yet still has control over them, it's better than the sheep don't panic. Now you see the dog lying down there. Now she's running around them to her left, which we call flanking. Now she's flanking to the right. Left. Lie down. Walk up. Lie down. She's going to fall in behind the sheep and keep the sheep coming towards me. Left. Lie down. Walk on. You'll notice she'll be trying to balance these sheep so that they're heading in my direction. Lie down. Walk on. Both my grandparents had farms. In Ireland, I'd go there once a year for maybe a month at a time in the summer. And that was always great. I, mean, I like the animals, you know, the cows. And there'd be a horse or two, and there'd be pigs, you know, sheep. And there was a farmer just at the end of the road that I used to spend a lot of time with as a young kid, helping in various tasks on the farm. But the main thing I've always liked is the workplace, what I call the workplace. I'd rather live in the country than the city. The cities are nice to visit. But I, I like the countryside, the natural.
maybe a way of life. Depends how many sheep you've got. Lots of sheep are better than just a few for making a living. Apparently there are around 75,000 sheep here in the 30s and 40s, maybe 50s, too. you know, from Yorkville down to Navarro. The original sheep came from Austin Holbrook, who used to have sheep right here where we are now. This is the old Holbert ranch. They can handle the steep terrain, and you know, they're good at walking around, searching out the food all over the place. Well, I think the land was suitable for sheep, not cattle. And it wasn't suitable for raising crops. It's too hilly, too steep. Now there are very few sheep. You know, a lot of the ranches are just lying fallow. There aren't any sheep on them and they've been subdivided. And the coyotes have become more of a problem in the last 20 years. But having said that, now I have a guard dog, a Pyrenees cross dog that basically lives with the sheep. And I haven't lost any ewes or lambs in the last two years since I've had him. Snoop Dog. To me, the sheep are, no, are not as interesting as the dogs. You know, the shepherds take pride in their dogs, if you like. Pretty much, I was imagined as a cowboy would with his horse. You know. Your partner's sort of... Get up! Some old poet shepherd back in England said of the border country between England and Scotland, it wouldn't be worth sixpence without the border collie. <laughs> And what he meant by that was, even though there were many thousands of sheep there, there'd be no way to get them in. People couldn't do it anyway. It's, the hills are too steep. The 
terrain's too rough. The sheep would outrun anybody, you know, or several people. Well, I tried outrunning the sheep for a few years. I had a, had a partner, and sometimes we'd get some other help, two or three other people we could sort of suck her in, I believe is the term. To They'd come and run around the hills for a while, too, and try and round up the sheep. And a lot of times you'd get the sheep, you know, close to the gate, but they still wouldn't go through that gate. You know, they'd bolt at the last minute. There'd be some shouting, maybe one person blaming the other person for not running fast enough. We'll just, we'll have, we'll have some nice, pleasant music going on underneath. Motorhead. Or Slayer or something like that, you know? <laughs> Poor Horace, I knew him well. You know, I told him to go to the dentist on numerous occasions, but as you can see, I think this made him grumpy at times. A turkey, portrait, you know what I mean? The one in my right hand is Gel, which is short for Gellert. There's Tad. You see, he's only got eyes for yous. He's not looking at us. This one you see on my right, he's a puppy. See how he's playing, you know? He's not all business like his dad. I've noticed when I let Tad, you know, work the sheep, that none of the sheep really challenge you. The first dog was Red, who I got from an old sheep rancher who lived in Yorkville, Claude Rose. I got a lot of good advice from Claude. 
I was in Wales in 83, and I got two Border Collies, a male and a female. And then a few years later on, I got a dog called Sean, who was probably my best trials dog. She's my most experienced border collie. See, showing up now. She's related to a dog that I brought back from Wales in 1983. And she's the dog I, I go to the sheepdog trials with. It's called a RESDA, Redwood Empire Sheepdog Association. In this style, in the Redwood Empire style, it's only done here in Northern California in five counties. It's somewhat of an underground sport and not well known, but it, it's gained a lot of popularity in the last 30 years. And I'm pretty sure there are more sheepdog trials now in this country than ever. Trials are a good test of the dog because they're in strange territory, usually on strange sheep. A good trials dog has what they call eye, and that eye is the ability to control the sheep by staring at them. I'd like to train other people to train their dogs. I remember going to the Boonville Fair when maybe when I read was a year or so old and watching the sheepdog trials and thinking, no, oh, that's that's nothing. My dog could do that. And then I realized from then on what you know, all the things I didn't know. And that's sort of like the artistry, you know, the old shepherds. They, they had good dogs. Made it look easy. The most important thing about training a border collie is the amount of time you put into it. You can always get better, you know. And then you get an old dog, so then you... You know, sadly, the old dogs get too old, so you've got to have to get a young dog. Start again, you know which takes time, and uh, patience. Patience is a virtue that comes with time. And I've found that to be true.
Catch up to you. 